Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm going to call this meeting the January 25th, 2024 special meeting of the Long-Term Financial Policy and Audit Subcommittee to order at 4.01 p.m. Madam Host, may we have a roll call vote? Chair Rogers. Member Staff. Here. Member McDonald. Here. Let the order reflect that the subcommittee members are present with the exception of Chair Rogers. Thank you. Host McCurl. McClure. McClure. Yes. Sorry about that. Will you please um, explain how public comments will be heard to today's meeting and then we're going to go to public comments. Thank you. Welcome subcommittee members, panel members, and members of the public. Thank you for joining us today in person and via Zoom. This meeting is being recorded. As a reminder to all present, please set your cell phones so as not to disturb others. The City of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. After an agenda item has been presented, the chair will ask the subcommittee members for their comments or questions and then immediately following their discussion, the chair will open the item for public comment. If you are attending in person and wish to comment, you will be called on when the agenda item is open for public comment. Please raise your hand to indicate that you would like to comment. And once you've been called upon, you will be asked if you wish to state your name for the record. This public comment is limited to three minutes and a courtesy timer will appear on the screen. Our meeting format is integrated to allow members of the public who are using Zoom to view and listen to the meeting. Any email comments that were received by the deadline will have been included and uploaded to the agenda prior to the start of today's meeting, but emails are not read into the record. Thank you. So we are now taking um, in-person public con comments on item two, which is not agenda items. This is a time when any person may address the subcommittee on matters not listed in this agenda, but are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. Madam Host, do we have any public comments? I see no hands raised at this time. Thank you so much. We'll go ahead and move on to item three, approval of the minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Okay. If there's no edits or corrections, the minutes of the November 9th, 2023 will be approved as submitted. We'll now move on to item 4.1, um, federal year 2024 quarterly budget review, second quarter. Looks like Veronica is going to be presenting for us. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Um, yeah, today we will be going through the second quarter update for the general fund as we do quarterly, and we will be taking a look first at general fund revenues, followed by expenditures, before we take a look at our next steps and answer any questions for the upcoming budget season. So our first slide is a picture of our pie chart. One more, please. This is a snapshot of our revenues that we've adopted for the fiscal year 23-24. We adopted a revenue budget of 204.8 million in recurring revenues. Um, and our two biggest pieces of this pie chart are property tax and sales tax. Those are the largest indicators of the health of the general fund that fund most of our operations. And as a reminder, this year we did pass a deficit budget. So even with hitting our targets on revenue, we are still facing a potential deficit at the end of the year. So on the next slide, we're gonna look at the major revenue categories and see where we are as of December 31st. Um, all the way down at the bottom line where it says total operating revenues, you'll see we're at 42.4%. Um, it might be reasonable to think we'd be at 50%, but this isn't the case because there's some timing differences with some of these categories. Overall, 42.4% is, is reasonable for us. Um, starting at the top, I'll take you down through some of the major categories. Property taxes, we are at 56.8%, which is just slightly ahead. We normally are at 55% this time of year. We receive a 45% payment in the spring and 55% in December. So that one's looking good in part to some of our smaller property tax categories, such as supplemental property tax. These are a little more volatile and running high this year. Sales tax is received on a two month lag. This is our largest revenue source in the general fund. And we wouldn't expect it to be at 50%, but we do expect it to be more at about 33 or 34%. We're trending low on this one this year. We've been hearing there's going to be an economic slowdown, and we're definitely seeing it. 
Um, if we were to continue on this trend by the end of the year, we would be coming up at $5 million short in sales tax. That may not happen because this number does not yet include November and December, which we know are typical high spending months of the year. Um, and we may regain some ground in the second half of the year. Consumer confidence is high, the economy is doing well. We're hoping it won't be quite that bad. But even if sales tax does come in low, we're seeing that we're making it up in some other categories. So overall, the general fund is doing okay. Utility users tax is another one that is also received on a lag and this one's coming in ahead of schedule. We've seen some big spikes in the utility users tax assessed on um, PG&E and energy costs. And we've been trying to increase our budget to make up for this increase, but um, the revenue still is coming in high. So this one's trending a bit high. Other taxes is made up of some pretty significant categories. We're gonna save that for the next slide that we'll go over those. Licenses and permits is just about at 50%, and these are a lot of our PED revenues, so those are right on track. And charges for services, we're trending a little ahead as well. That's all of our recreation revenues, which can be slightly seasonal. We see a lot in the um, July, August, September months, as well as um, our PED revenues there. And then the remaining categories down there are kind of our smaller categories. Things to note, fines and forfeitures is running a little low. That's our parking violations revenue mostly. We've been offering a lot of free parking around the city, so that one's coming in lower than expected. Um, and transfers, well, it looks like it's ahead. That one will come in at 100% at the end of the year. We can control our transfers. So our final slide, oh no, I'm sorry. We're on other taxes. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, this is kind of a deep dive of that one category of other taxes, which includes some significant categories. Um, and going down this list, the VLF swap is slightly ahead. We received two equal payments of this one throughout the year. So we're gonna exceed budget by about a million dollars at the end of the year. And- Can you just, what does VLF stand for? Vehicle license fees. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And that one we get kind of in line with our property taxes. Our franchise fees is, um, this one comes in substantially in April. So this is just a timing thing. It's not looking low, it's just, we don't see the rest of it till the end of the fiscal year. And motor vehicle license fees, same thing. That one comes in in March. Our cannabis industry tax, we've seen this one in the recent years kind of stabilize at around 2 million. So we have a budget of 1.8 and it looks like we may exceed that this year. We have exceeded 2 million in past years, but then it kind of dips down. So it, um, not necessarily indicative of a trend of it growing, but we'll, we'll watch that one. Our real property transfer tax has been low. Every year we are reducing our budget and then our revenues keep coming in lower than we've reduced. So we're kind of trying to find where the equilibrium is on that one. Um, again, this is just a product of the housing market. Interest rates are high. Although our home prices, the valuation is high, the number of transactions are low. So that's this is based on volume of home sales. And then our occupancy tax is coming in a bit high as well. We've seen a spike in that one in the recent year due to um, short-term rental tax revenue, as well as just the tourism re recovering since COVID. And then our final revenue slide is gonna give you a comparison of where we were this time last year to where we are this year. Property taxes is growing quite well at 7.6%, but again, some of that is our smaller, more volatile categories that are coming in high. Sales taxes is low. We are lower than where we were last year, which is concerning because for so long we've been seeing sales tax grow very steadily year over year. Um, again, we'll have to see more at the third quarter and just see what happens in the second half of the fiscal year. Utility users tax is right about on trend. Other taxes is high. Uh, this is primarily due to business tax, which we did have a one-time audit occur in the fall. So there was kind of a timing thing of one-time payments came in sooner than expected in the current year than we had seen in the previous year. So that's not necessarily a growth trend, but just the result of one-time payments coming in this year, um, as well as vehicle license fees have been growing. And other significant trends are smaller categories. We do see volatile shifts, so there's nothing really noteworthy there. And charges for services is coming in slightly lower, but just about on track. So that concludes the revenue discussion. Um, again, overall revenues look like the general fund may be just fine by the end of the year. We're kind of tracking with budget, but that's really only one half of the 
piece of the puzzle here. We have to see where expenditures go as well because we do have a deficit, deficit that we're aware may be coming our way. So our next slide shows second quarter expenditures of where we are as of December 31st by department. So we've excluded non-operating expenditures such as projects, which are not really a reliable source here for showing our spending. Um, if you look at the far column on the right percent of budget, I would expect us to see anywhere between 40 and 60% spending. There's timing issues with invoices and contracts, but that's what I would consider to be expected. I'll take you through some of the anomalies that we see here. Uh, city Council is just slightly ahead. This is due to the interim city attorney contract being paid from City Council's budget. We're going to adjust that at year end, so you aren't necessarily over budget. That's just a one-time thing this year. And City Manager had some vacancies in the first half of the year that are now fully staffed, so their staffing costs were very low. Um, Communications and intergovernmental relations, they're only at 37%, but that's also due to vacancies. They're a department of nine people. So when you have a couple people vacant, it makes a very big difference in their spending. And then the other very low one is housing and community services. And this is just a timing thing. This is their contract for legal aid that we will pay 100% of that by the end of the fiscal year. Our next slide shows a comparison of department spending where we were last year compared to where we are this year. Um, I would expect to see anywhere from like a three to 10% increase year to year to account for increases in operational costs and staffing costs. We're a little all over the place on these. A lot of this is due to reorgs that we've had. We moved the parks department from TPW into recreation. We moved um, community engagement from recreation to communications and intergovernmental relations. There's been a lot of shifts. So, Again, city council looks high, but this is also due to that contract that we've been paying out of there that will be adjusted. And city attorney looks low. This was due to vacancies. So there are some, some fluctuations in here that can all be explained. But overall, if you look at the bottom line at the total of 8.1% growth, that's right in line with what we would expect. And then our final slide for expenditures is looking at salaries and benefits. Um, salaries and benefits are about 73% of our general fund expenditures. They are our biggest portion of what we spend. That's also our most timely. So it's a very good indicator to see where we're gonna land at year end with spending. So compared to budget at December 31st, we have spent 50% of salaries and 48% of benefits, which puts us at 49.3%, which is right, right there but this is actually a departure from previous years of what we've been used to seeing. We've had some pretty significant vacancies in previous years. So seeing 50% and 48% is high. Uh, with dollar figures this big, one percentage point can make up a million dollars upwards. So while we're not over budget on these, what we are seeing is that there's not quite as much turn back anticipated at the end of the year. Turn back is what we call unspent appropriations. And that's usually the primary source of any surplus at the end of the year, are these unspent salaries appropriations. There's also a push at the end of the year, departments will see if they have salary savings to get city manager approval to use that for some one-time funding needs, put it into projects if possible. So we anticipate whatever salary savings there may be, we sometimes end up spending on other things if we can at the very end of the year. So what this means is that with salaries running this close and revenues running as close as they are, that deficit is looking very likely. Um, we may be able to close the gap on it a bit, but at this point, at the second quarter, it doesn't look like we're gonna close it completely. And we're certainly not seeing evidence of a surplus starting to come through. Um, I think that was everything I had to say for salaries and benefits, just that in recent years, we've usually seen the turn back in salaries and benefits of being three to five million. So to see us running this close is a change. Um, it's, it's evident of the staffing that we've seen in police. Police department has been making a big effort to fully staff, if not overstaff with people coming up through the academy and upcoming retirement. So it's good. We're glad to have the staffing in and not be facing as many vacancy issues as we've had, but it also means we're spending more than we used to in previous years. So that concludes looking at the expenditures um, coming up in the next few months as we enter our budget season, putting together the budget for the next fiscal year. We're going to continue to refine our revenue estimates, make sure that we're capturing every bit of revenue that we have coming our way because in the, the budget, our revenue allows us to 
budget accordingly for the resources that we need and the expenditures that we need. Um, starting January 29th through the end of February, that's when departments put together their budgets and we begin our analysis. And we'll be back in April of 2024 with a third quarter update and we'll be able to see more of what the general fund is doing. And then finally in May, on May 7th and 8th, we will be giving you the study session of an in-depth look at the budget general fund and all other funds as well. Before I open it up for questions, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I say, yeah go ahead. <clears throat> so um, actually, Veronica hit a lot of the, the points that, that I wanted to make, so I'm not going to belabor those. Um, well, maybe a little bit. It is me. I tend to belabor a bit. Um, so, uh, where we are right now, where we are, uh, developing, um, our long range forecast, uh, right now it's, it's in line with how it was, uh, uh, when we last presented it to you. Uh, so the, at that point, we we were looking at about a six million dollar deficit for 24, 25. Um, uh, uh, our preliminary look still has us right around that, maybe a little bit less. But uh, uh, again, as we start refining the revenues that come in, refining the expenditures that are going into it, we are looking at uh, a deficit. Um, uh, uh, for that year, and it will continue to grow going out without labor costs in it. That's just kind of where we are right now. ARPA uh, programs, uh, at least the homeless uh, um, programs that were funded by ARPA, we uh, uh, expect those to be back in the general fund because they were originally in the general fund. Uh, I'm. We are not uh, um, making assumptions that any other of the ARPA programs will will go back to or will go into the general fund, but there is a good chance that they would. They're very, uh, we have some very popular programs that were funded through ARPA, safe parking being one of them and response being another. We are actively looking for non-general fund sources um, and some of them exist. But if we were to continue those programs, uh, they would most likely, uh, uh, at least in part, but probably in whole, uh, come from the general fund, which only adds to that deficit going. And of course, you know that we have, uh, uh, we're embarking on our labor negotiations and that will also have an impact. Um, we are in, uh, just from an economic standpoint, uh, we had um, uh, Jerry Nicholsberg uh, uh, do a presentation this morning at Economic Development Board, um, and our our economy uh, uh, in in whole nationally or uh, nationally at California and even in Sonoma County is doing well. We're in one of those areas where uh, um, yes, we are seeing sales tax receipts start to taper a bit. We, we knew that they were going to uh, uh, flatten off. Um, they may be a little bit more than flattening off. It's something that we're looking at. Uh, we're not prepared to, uh, um, uh, you know, until we get into April, that's, that's probably when we're, you know, going to make a call on what we do with our assumptions. Uh, right now, we're we're seeing our uh, uh, staying flat is is fine. As Veronica said, we have other revenue sources that tend to make up uh, dips. But the biggest point that that we want to make is that we adopted a budget uh, essentially in a deficit. Yes, we plug that gap with reserves, but that just means that what you're seeing right there is we are trending to a deficit situation at the end. Can we make up $3.3 million? Um, there's, I, I, would, I would probably think that we could, uh, um, uh, you know, past uh, uh, years shows that, that usually we can, um, but the, as, we, as that thing grows deeper, it, it becomes 
harder for us. And we could be looking at a spot in a couple of years uh, uh, where we are not only adopting a budget in a deficit, but then ending the year in a deficit. Um, uh, so that's, that is, uh, uh, as we go through our analysis even more, refine our projections, council will know more, this body will know more, and we'll, we'll present that. Um, uh, but these are the preliminary things that we're seeing now. Uh, and so just the, uh, the neon heads up that, that these are out there. Hence my dour look this morning. <laughs> With that, my comments are done. If, uh, right. The, we'll go ahead and go to questions from members of the committee, Vice Chair, Vice Mayor. Maybe we have a couple here. Um, well, first of all, it seems like your, your recent track record of very, very tight budgeting continues. It seems like you're within, what was it, a percent, percent, percentage and a half last year we were within? We're kind of trending in that same direction this year. So kudos, kudos in the budgeting, even if it doesn't mean more revenues at the end of the year. Um, could we could, could you say or could you talk a little bit more about the sales tax? So we've got the decline this year as compared to last year. And am I re remembering correctly that those numbers are not inflation adjusted? So, uh, so that sales tax decline, the fact that we're having a decline this year. Yeah. In spite of increasing inflation, like that drop is in real real terms, yeah. even a little steeper than it seems, right? Yeah. Uh, the usually what we hear and what we're seeing is that it's a shift from uh, from the purchase of goods that happened more so during the the pandemic uh, okay. uh, to services that are non taxable. That's right. So we're we're seeing that um, people are spending money. They're spending money though on things differently than what they used to, um, uh, and you know the other thing to to understand is that we had uh, really high growth in sales tax during those right. pandemic years. So as it hits its more normal, um, that's uh, right, upward trajectory. You know, if you're if you're getting nine percent growth. And then all of a sudden you back down to 3% growth, which is normal. You're, you're going to see that kind of reduction, that flattening out. We're just going through that little bit of a correction period, right? And That's so right. you're we're not I mean, that last panicked. Yeah. Right? Okay. You know, it's something that we watch because it is our largest revenue source. Okay. And we are seeing the increases in occupancy tax, which suggests people are traveling more, spending money on non-taxable goods, as they say. So it's kind of true. <laughs> we're seeing one go down and another go up. It was one of the points that was made today in the presentation uh, by Dr. Nicholsberg was that um, there is a there's it, it's a change in um, uh, uh, behavior. It's a behavioral change in uh, uh, and almost general generationally. So what we're seeing now is people are saving less and just buying more. But it really depends on the things that they're buying, the stuff that they want to do. They want to go on a trip. They're going to go on a trip. They're not saving for something else. That's the next big question in economics, probably, is understanding why that is happening uh, as opposed to it didn't happen in the past. Now, again, you know, he, he made some, some good points, points that we've seen and, and that are just – now starting where most economic or most most economists are seeing the same or they're coming to the same conclusion in that during the Great Recession you lost equity you uh, um, you uh, you don't retire right you keep working because your nest egg left well during this past during the pandemic we didn't have that happen. You know, equity is 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 good in houses now. That's rebounded. So people are also ten years older, and they've left the labor force. So there's a lot of contradictions. It made sense for them to do that, but but you, you know, you would look at a shrinking labor force and and trying to understand how our unemployment rates are going and how all all of that. It just doesn't make sense. It's a reset. 
over what we would normally look at. And that's the challenge for most of us going forward is, is how, to, uh, um, how to take that reset and then plug it into our forecasting to try to figure out what's going on in the future. That's helpful. Just a couple more things oh, in my mind. Um, sticking with sales tax for a moment, Monica, you mentioned that you would rather have, as a percentage of budget for sales tax at this point in the year, that rather than seeing it be at 31%, we'd rather have it be like the 33, 34%. And that's, as you're doing that comparison, that's without the November, December sales tax right. figures. We would, like, yeah. That's an apples to apples comparison. That's usually for the four months we have in at this time of year, um, it's usually, yeah, at about 30. 33, 34%. Okay. This is this is way down the rabbit hole, but I, like how much do our do our sales tax or how much does our sales tax tend to jump in December? Is it is it is that like the, the highest month of the year? Or it's you I'm know, sorry? it's not it's not huge. It's not what you would think that it's this enormous lump sum payment we get in, but the thought is okay, if throughout 2023, if things kind of backed off, maybe the fourth quarter is when things are gonna heat up again, you know. Um, it's not a significant increase, but we do we actually, I'll let you know, we did see our November sales tax payment hit the bank yesterday. So it wasn't included in this because we received it in January and it was still lower than last year's payment, okay. just by a little bit, not by a lot. So, you know, we're hoping we'll kind of close that gap, but yeah, we do see November and December can be the larger months, but overall they're not going to be the ones to, you know, bankroll us for the whole year. So that's helpful. Um, and am I understanding the general story correctly that on the revenue side, we're pretty much tracking the budget, maybe a little lower than we like in some instances, but within within shouting distance of budget. On the expense side, my my sense is that we're running a little bit higher than we would expect with the budget. So yeah, I think one point that I left out is on our salary and benefits slide. When we see us at right at fifty percent, that means that by by the fourth quarter, by the end of the year, we'll still be there, likely within okay. right at fifty percent, if not maybe a little low. I think it was 49 percent total. Um, with services and supplies, the part that I left out, we expect that to be pretty darn close to 100%, but usually just a bit less. It's at about 99%. It's hard to put a number up there at the second quarter and show where we are because a lot of that is paid on a lag and timing differences, but we know that departments by the end of the year try to spend every bit of their budget that they have, and they try very hard not to go over. So we do expect our expenditure side to be right about on track. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, and then just two final comments for me. One, on the humorous side, um, as part of your scared straight strategy for city council, when you've got the opportunity to highlight numbers like the 60% um, you know, over budget or percent of budget, or what is it, 79%, 75.9% spending, yeah. you have fun with font size <laughs> and, and highlights, right? Even if it's just in the red box. Yeah. yeah just, it's just, not a for real. Just, go, just, go, just go for it, though. <laughs> Um, but then more seriously, with the um, with the with the structural deficits that we know that we're we're running over the next few years, and these one-time expenses that we know, or not one-time, rather these um, the programs that we're running that we know will come back onto the the budget in response, safe parking, etc. Um, I'm doing my best to keep those in the back of my head. I'd love to have some kind of. It would be helpful to have some kind of chart that just reminded me what's coming, what's likely to come back on the budget, or what, or what we would we would probably want to bring back on the budget, so that we know that when we're talking about these surplus funds and we're throwing up numbers like twenty or twenty-four um, million in terms of surplus funds, that really that's been allocated because we've got we you know, we've already kind of unofficially earmarked most of those funds, not just for salaries and benefits, but for these programs that are going to come back on in, in, in general fund. That would be that would be helpful. Helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one of the things that I, I have, we talked to housing to get a sense of exactly what the annual costs are of not only the homeless that we think we can, we can guesstimate <laughs> at around four ish million. That's, that's will be a hit on the general fund. Uh, once the ARPA funding runs out, uh, it's the safe parking, uh, so we've and, and any other ancillary program of uh, that is uh, that would need general fund funding so that we could present that. I just don't have it today. I'll probably have it by goal setting. Perfect. Um, so yeah, because it would be a good reference point. 
we always speak to it that these are coming in kind of uh i i mean i can tell you what's what the arpa program is for like say safe parking or sorry in response is 3.9 million but i know that that's a multi-year number and i can't for the life of me think of what the what the single year number is so those are the things that that we're getting so that we can provide that context thank you that'd be helpful and that's it for me yeah i agree with um with mark that having the arpa money of what's going out and then it helps us not only in the context of goal setting but it will help us when we go to lobby our federal and state partners when we're asking for grant money or we're asking for appropriations so for me it's like two things this is what we're losing and this is what we because this is what we have right now and this is what's working so it's saving money in an overall picture as well so when it comes to goal setting for for us i think that's important to have those in context i want to go back to the sales tax which you said is trending low and i'm going to go back during the pandemic people were not traveling they were bored at home. I know I spent probably an, an exorbitant amount of money because I was shopping because we weren't going places. We weren't going to dinner. We weren't going out and traveling. Now that some of that is shifting, it goes back to our conversation that we had a couple months ago on our occupancy tax and our sales tax here locally, because if people are coming to Santa Rosa for that, but our occupancy tax is too low, even though we might be trending low on our sales tax because our own community isn't, are we capitalizing on other tourism coming into our community? So a couple things, where are we at on that? And, and are we ready to move forward with addressing those taxes that we're currently getting? And because that could be how we're offsetting some of this other trend of sales tax going a little bit lower or looking at some of our revenue. Right, so we are, uh, I'm, I'm not prepared to give a full debriefing on, on that right now. Okay. I should be able to at, at uh, goal setting. Okay. Um, um, but that's, we, we have done our opinion surveys on that um, uh, and, and we're discussing internally how we move forward and with which measure, but obviously we know that in order to solve the long-term problem, revenue has got to be a part of it. It's it's really both sides of the ledger. Right. So we're doing our, our best to look at whatever revenue sources we can. And then along that line, when we're looking at what happened during the pandemic, the feds were also appropriating money to families to help offset if you were on unemployment, you were getting money in. So there wasn't, there was more money actually coming into mm -hmm. communities for them to spend money locally and buy things. People were cooking at home, they were buying more groceries, they were mm -hmm. doing other things. So I could see that that's now dropped off and it does feel that with inflation, you're a lot more cautious about what you're buying because sour cream that was $2.99 is now $6.99. So, you know, those are those weird things that you notice at the grocery store. One of the taxes that we talked about more recently during a presentation was the cannabis tax in the city of Santa Rosa, which is like one or zero percent, I believe. It's an extremely low percentage, if I remember correctly, during that presentation. So for medical, I believe it's zero percent. Um, I think our dispensary, I want to say it's three. It's um, like the lowest. It is low. It's, it's, we can go up to eight. Right. And we are not near there yet. So when we were talking about that specific program, the concern is around we're going at a loss on anything around something like that. So could we look at perhaps all of our taxes and look to see something that we maybe did five or six years ago is not actually appropriate for how much it's costing us to run a program or what's being taxed in the city and i'm not trying to pick on cannabis but i just that's the most recent one that i remember it being very very low so um i think that might be of interest to come back to look at some of those ordinances to look at revenue and see how much of a difference would an additional two percent make in our budget or if it's only three percent because if we get zero on medical, so that's a 3%, we're at $1.8 million. But if we upped it to 6%, that'd be an additional $2 million. 
because I'm something I do know about dispensaries is that their clientele will probably continue even if it goes up three percent potentially. I don't know if it'll curb anyone anyone's use of the of marijuana. So um, the occupancy tax, I had that. I was it was interesting to hear that you said that STRs as well as hotels were up. Do you know the difference in that? Because I think. We have a cap on STRs, so I'd be interested in knowing this is what we bring in for STRs, and this is the increase that we've seen on hotels, because I'd like to know if there's a, a difference, at, like if we're seeing more people stay in hotels because we've capped STRs. I'd like to have that information potentially brought back to us. And then let's see, we're on target on the budget. That's what it looked like to me. Um, when we talked about retirements, I know one of the areas that we've overstaffed specifically was around like police and fire to make sure we're fully staffed because of the lag time it takes for them to actually have and, and really get staff ready. It's like 14 months or something like that. So we've done a little bit of overage in, in to be prepared for retirements. Do we have any projections on how many retirements we're going to have in the departments. And the reason being is when you onboard somebody, you do have a cost savings because they don't come in at the same level as somebody who's going out on retirement. So do we know that by the next fiscal year, we're gonna retire out you know, 10 people in each of these departments and we're gonna actually be able to project a cost savings on how many staff members that we have in each of the departments. So um, we, we need to talk to the departments to, right. to I know that they have those communications um, right. for, uh, uh, you know, those that decide to announce that they are gonna retire. Um, I don't believe they are required to say, hey, I'm gonna retire okay. this year. Um, but you usually have those, those conversations so we'll have to do a little bit more more work on that to kind of uh, get uh, um, see if we can put some numbers to that. Um, but you're you're right. We we typically every year see a, a a group go out and then we start filling those ranks back up, usually from within, and then and then um, add to the lower levels. And then when you're looking at, like you said, negotiations earlier and some of these um, things that we have coming up, if you're if you're losing a certain amount of staff that you're top of the top and you're giving a certain percentage, that percentage is higher for those kind of uh, you know senior members. So that could actually change our forecast for projections of numbers too. If you're losing a certain amount of folks at a at a top tiered payment versus you know, kind of newer staff coming in at an entry level. Right. I, I would just, I know that especially in the public safety areas, they are, uh, um, they, they are very good at promoting within their ranks. So it goes up. So you're, you're, you've got, uh, and I apologize. I don't know my, uh, I think like sergeant, captain, all of those. Yeah, I think, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if a lieutenant mean. goes out, there's a captain that's usually ready to go in. Okay. If that's the, the other way, damn it. Sorry. Oh, sorry, everybody. <laughs> sorry. Darn it. Okay. Um, uh, you know, so anyway, there's, there's usually somebody ready to promote up into that. So we'd have to really look to see how much savings you're really getting because it's uh, 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 the, the, the difference between the, the promotion is probably not as great as, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what that is. Okay, but. that's helpful to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right, they do, they do yeah. that. And they, there needs to be that rank and file, I mean, specifically in public okay. safety. Yeah. Okay, the last question is around mid-year, what, when is that coming to, are we going to have a mid-year budget again this year? And what, what month, I thought that came to us in February. Um, so I, I'll i be bringing an item, uh, It's I think it's targeted for March 26th. Okay. It's a report item. Uh, it is a budget adjustment, but what it is is, is uh, uh, taking reserves and putting them into one-time projects. Okay. So uh, these are badly needed projects that we haven't been able to include 
to our normal operating budget um, because it simply wasn't the, the, uh, um, the funding on the front end. So what we usually say is we will wait until, until we know our year end numbers, uh, what we have left over, that's what we could parse out. Um, uh, all the departments, especially the general fund departments contributed to this. We vetted those, those uh, projects focusing on um, uh, uh, some, you know, infrastructure, facility infrastructure projects, uh, uh, employee centric projects, uh, things like that to try to, um, uh, but focusing on one time. Okay, that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay, now if there's no more questions, we're gonna go ahead and go for public comment on item 4.1. Madam Host, do you have any public comments on item 4.1? I don't see any hands raised at this time. Did you have any questions? Please go ahead. Um, hi. Uh, so um, first of all, kudos for the whole slideshow. It really was like really amazing with the budgeting and everything and how you had each section. Um, my question was, uh, what would you do like, like I saw like last year um, when, when you went over last year's um, budgeting? Um, yeah, you had like a lot left over. What would you do? What What do you do with the extra money, and where or and where do you put it in? Like, where do you put? Like, where do you? Do you hear my question? So, during public comment, you can make a comment to us, or you can say that you'd like to know where this is coming. I'm just going to use this as an opportunity to talk about how public comment works. So, if we don't answer your question, I don't want you to be offended. Oh no, no. But this no is how it works in public comment. But if your question is, if I'm hearing you, what do we do with the leftover funds at the end of the year? Yes. When we is that what your question mm -hmm. is? Okay. Like, do you put it towards um, mm -hmm. like? Um, uh, like uh, improving the city at uh, the Santa Rosa, like when it comes to building or when it comes to like funding into different things like um, homeless shelters or you know other things as well. Okay, so Chair and staff, would you like to ask any clarifying questions if it comes back after public comment? It's a good, it's a good question. It is a good question. Um, I think I think we make our, our CFO answer that. Okay, that. We'll, we'll we'll go ahead. Is there any more public comment on this item? Please go ahead. Um, I'd like to see possibly a breakdown of the occupancy tax by possible. Um, is there public money going to put people in there that aren't tourists? You know, get them off the street. They're sleeping. So, is there a differentiation or a breakdown of actual public funds money, whether it's state, county, city, um, as opposed to tourism or just local people renting hotel rooms, etc. It'd kind of be interesting to see if there's a time frame where that goes up way high when extra monies come in for certain programs, or um, if it's all on, on uh, local charities that pay to get people in there and that's part of the occupancy tax revenue that comes in. Is there a differentiation between public service and uh, tourism? That's what I'd like to see. So if I'm clear on your question, mm -hmm. just so that I'm aware, you're asking to see if perhaps we're putting homeless folks in a hotel and that you're using public dollars to house people and that we're gaining um, occupancy tax or is it specific you just want to know how we're who's occupying this space um no it's not it's not it's just to differentiate because we know people get charity and get put into hotels motels and that is occupancy there's a tax on that right and that's calculated in our income um so i'm just kind of curious what the percentage might be um you know because certain programs may have come in and more people were able to get off the street and into, you know, temporary shelter. But is that part of the revenue that's counted on occupancy tax? You see what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. Okay. That's it. That's kind of a, just a general question, you know, or it's all thrown into one pot and, hey, you know, we're doing good. Um, 
and it might be a false flag because it's not tourism. Anyway, that's just my comment. Thank you. Yeah. So in regards to homeless services, what might be helpful is when Kelly does um, a breakdown um, during budget review to actually be able to tell us how much are we spending at Sam Jones, how much are we spending at Caritas, how much are we spending in public dollars for occupancy and hotels, so that we actually can see the breakdown as opposed to a hold. It's $4 million. Where, where does that $4 million go? And I think that's helpful from... Um, from a council perspective as well to know this is actually where you're spending the $4 million of public funds on things. So whether it's a question from the public or not, I found that that's, that can be helpful to know where is our actual money going for which services, because sometimes services are, you know, do have a better rate of return, should, should, so to speak. And I don't want to say that around homeless services, but we know that certain programs actually really help people get back into permanent housing. So I think knowing where we're investing our money and making the decisions and then seeing for me the breakdown of this is a highly effective um, program. And we have that a little bit with um, violence prevention program. We could see certain parts of that program were highly effective for rate of recidivism. So if we're looking at this in sort of the same lens, I think that could be helpful. And that would also answer the public's question. Yeah. If, if you mind, um, don't mind. Um, I, I think coming up, uh, I'm not sure the exact meeting, but I, I believe there's a homeless services uh, uh, study session uh, on their strategic plan the first year of it. Um, I'll make sure that I talk with uh, Director Passenger and Kelly um, to include that, but I'm sure it's probably already in there um, as they're gonna go through it. Um, just as a general point of reference, uh, if the city, um, I know during the pandemic, because we needed to deal with non-congregate uh, housing as, you know, as it related to COVID, um, uh, we did contract with some hotels to uh, put our homeless population, the, uh, uh, um, the more uh, um, at risk population in there. But under those contracts, uh, we don't get tax for that. So I, um, as far as I know, if, if there is, you know, I can't speak for nonprofits or charities or, or anyone else that goes into a hotel or what arrangement they have. But we are, uh, from the, the tax that we're getting from that is from tourism. Um, so we don't pay um, the tax just to get it back another way. That would make sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. That answer your question. That was, yeah, thank you. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then as far as our year in budget, those funds, just for clarification, go to city manager and oftentimes are funding one time projects. So the year end when we've had money left, my understanding was uh, city manager had a budget and then we looked at our priority list and then those funds were appropriated towards those, yeah. those mm -hmm. one time projects because right. it's not a real um, savings every year. It's just a little bit left over, and then uh, city manager of all of our departments, she knows exactly what's happening, and then she can appropriate that for those one-time projects. Yeah. Thank you. The, sure. the way a budget works, um, just in general, we, we, at the beginning of the year, we give appropriations to departments within a fund. So if we're talking about the general fund, we, we, we establish a budget for them. What the departments are able to spend, we assume they're gonna spend all of their dollars. If they don't, the leftover funds are returned to the funding source from which they came. So in that case, uh, your general fund budget, anything left over goes into the general fund reserves as uh, um, Committee Member McDonald said, uh, we, we do have a list internally of projects that, that uh, are one-time in nature because it's not an ongoing recurring 
source of funding. It's a one-time source of funding. So we go through that list and then I will bring an item to council and appropriate funds. So take it out of those reserves and put them into a project. Uh, um, and then we, we complete that project. So that's the process. And then just for going over the presentation in large part, much of our leftover money states as you will, um, was because we had a lot of staff that positions that hadn't been filled th for the year. So at the end of the year, a department may have a lot of vacancies. So they'll have that little bit of leftover money and then that will go towards a one time. But the next year, we still budget for all of those vacancies to be taken because we need the staff. So, and we can, and we're only, on target right now for a lot of those. And the, we, for we your presentation. only move the money out into one time projects because we are above our council mandated reserve Reserves. policy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we are moving on now. Um, if there's no more um, public comment to future agenda items, item number five, would you have any items for future agenda? We're gonna keep talking about the budget and revenue. I, I have one for you. I'd like to know um, kind of the all in on the golf course and where we're at since we're at about a year and a half, I think now with under that contract, including debt service so that we actually have a real number of what the golf course is, is running us and what still needs to be done out there. Just so we have that in mind because okay. you know it's such a popular destination, but I think yeah. it's important for us to actually have the real numbers when we're looking at our deficit as well. Absolutely. We can do that. Great. Um, my, my suggestion would be that we do that in our March meeting. Sure. Um, the February meeting is in what, two weeks? Um, no problem. I don't know that we can pull that together. My, my suggestion would be that we cancel that meeting and then, uh, and then focus on Bennett Valley Golf Course uh, in the March meeting. I know uh, we're also, uh, I, I think it's it's come up to talk about how we would analyze uh, uh, in-house services versus contract services, just in a general way, how we would do that cost benefit analysis. Uh, so that would be an uh, March or April um, discussion there, uh, TBD. Um, but definitely we can do the Better Valley one in March I'll talk with uh, uh, Jen Santos, and we'll get um, we'll get a presentation together. Perfect. Right. Anything else? No. Nope. All right. Well, with that, we um, are adjourned for the meeting, and our next meeting will be February eighth. We're going to cancel that. One. We're going to cancel that one. The next one will be March. Oh, sorry, March fourteenth. March fourteenth. March fourteenth. March fourteenth, and I believe we're moving it to three thirty. Yeah, I need to talk with you about that but yes Mayor Rogers the, mentioned it too yes, so yes, I just wanted absolutely. it on record you that we are probably going to so be figure, earlier right figure uh 330 to 430 330 we'll to 430 the, we'll thank you so much for Perfect. the presentation it's yeah. always so thank informative you. and we appreciate all your time today thank